Hi there! A lot of people have been asking me how I make the agenda slides that I use in my live talks, so I thought I would make you a video to show you how it's done. This is a visual slide in that it goes left to right, simulating the forward movement of time, and has visual indicators to show how much time will be allocated for each section of my talk. This is what it looks like in design mode, and let me show you what it looks like in presenter mode. So I walk through each section of the talk and click on each section as I talk about it. This is a great way to focus audience attention. It's called Conceal and Reveal or Slide Builds. So you might see either one of those two terms. So let's get over to the demo screen and I'll show you how I do these. I am using Google Slides for this demo. You can, you, you can do the same thing in PowerPoint or Keynote or LibreOffice Impress, whatever robust slide software you prefer. And when you go into Google Slides, the first thing that you see as your default slide layout is the title slide layout. I am going to first change this layout to the title only layout. And that gives me a placeholder, a content placeholder, where I can uh, write the word agenda at the top. So I'll do that. I am going to change that. I, Arial is a perfectly serviceable font for slide design very readable, transparent typography, which we talk about often as an ideal to shoot for in typography. But I don't myself personally like the look of it. I'm going to change that to Corbel, which I've been using a lot lately. And then I'm going to start drawing my shapes. So first, I'm going to grab the line tool, activate the line tool, and draw a line across the bottom, uh, probably one third of my screen. And as I'm doing this, I'm holding down the shift key, which will help you draw a perfectly straight line. Perhaps you've had trouble drawing a straight line in the past, and that's how you can mitigate that. Just hold down the shift while you're drawing the line. I'm going to add an end cap to this line. That's a stylistic choice again. You could uh, just leave it without an end cap, or you could use one of these other types of pointy arrows or boxes that are options for you as well, doing your line styling. And I'm going to leave it as the default sort of dark gray color. I don't want this line to be visually the most salient feature on this slide. So I'm just going to leave it as the dark gray that it defaults to. You can play with uh, color salience and visual hierarchy on your own. Next, I'm going to draw boxes related to the sizes of the sections of each of my talk. So I want narrow boxes for the section of my talk that will take less time, and wider boxes showing the sections that will have more time devoted to them. So we're drawing a visual relationship. And it's not scientific. I'm not going to mathematically figure this out like 20 pixels worth of box is equal to 5 minutes. But I am going to try and give some visual idea. And you can see that when I draw my first shape, I just chose the regular shape tool with the angular box rather than the um, some of the other choices that I have here in Google Slides, like the rounded rectangle and others. But I'm going to choose the angular rectangle shape and by default, in Google Slides, I have a dark gray outline around the shape. That's fine for now. I'm going to copy this shape, and I'm going to copy it not with the usual keyboard shortcuts. You could also do this from the toolbar menu. You could do Edit, Copy, and Paste, which are familiar keyboard sh shortcuts to many people. Instead, I am going to hold down my Alt Option key. I'm using a Mac. It will be a different Alt key on your machine. But do figure out which one it is because this will save you lots of time as you design in the future. I'm going to hold that down as I've selected this shape and I'm going to draw another one and it makes a duplicate copy that retains the same features of the shape that I'm trying to copy and it gives me some control over where it's placed. So I'm going to do that four times. 
and here I've got four boxes. So I'm now going to assign sort of a relative amount of time to each one of these boxes. So I'm going to select them all. In Google Slides, to select shapes, all I have to do is draw my cursor in a box and any shape that that box touches will get selected. In PowerPoint, you need to hold down your shift key and select each box one at a time, but that's not too big of a deal. You'll, you'll be able to bounce back. Now I'm going to stretch this out to the end of my timeline and stretch my first shape back a little bit. I, I need to have two that are the same length, so I've done that. And as you can see, I'm positioning these boxes, and Google Slides is giving me not only some alignment guides, but also some indication here in between the boxes showing me how far apart each of these shapes is. This one needs to be a little shorter than the two middle ones. Those I'm going to select. So my intro slide is going to be five minutes. What did I say? Yeah, I said five minutes. My argument section is going to be 20 minutes. So proportionately, that five looks kind of like 20. That's all I'm doing here. And then my counter argument is going to be another 20 minutes. And then I've left 15 minutes for Q&A at the end. Oh, fiddlesticks. So now what I've done, I've screwed up the alignment a little bit. The top of my intro box is a bit taller than where the rest of the shapes lie. Don't worry, I want to show you a cool thing that you can do. I'm going to select all my boxes again. If you have never used the Arrange tools in your slide presentation software, you are in for a treat here. Before I discovered these tools, I was futzing with the alignment, you know, just manually. And you don't have to do that, because look what you have under your Arrange toolbar in your menus here. I am going to choose to align these objects vertically at the top so all of them have aligned to the top of the toilet of the box that was sort of northernmost on my slide and the other thing I'm going to do is distribute them and the reason I want to distribute them you can kind of see optically that there is a greater gap between intro and argument and between argument and counter argument than there is between the Q&A and the counter argument people will try and ascribe meaning to any differences that you have on your slides. So perhaps somebody in your audience might think that you are going to have uh, breaks in between each of these sections, and it's not just a stylistic choice that you put a gap in between each of these shapes. Somebody is going to think there will be longer breaks in between intro and argument and argument and counter argument than there will be between Q and A. So I can head off any like tiny little bit of confusion that might visually cause to some of my audience by just making sure that there's an equal amount of gap in between each of the shapes. So I'm going to go ahead, select those again. You can practice your selecting skill. This is a long video, but it's so packed with things that will be useful to you as you do more slide design and visual communication tasks. So I'm going to go to my Arrange menu in the toolbar again, find the Distribute command, and distribute them horizontally. And a tiny little adjustment was made to the gaps between each of these shapes. Perhaps you noticed. Also going to quickly, because it bothers me, select these shapes again, take off that gray outline. I don't want that there. I'm going to make this uh, Corbel font too. And I'm going to make the fonts as big as I can get them without breaking the lines in any one of these shapes. All right, this is looking good. Next, I'm going to add text boxes that give the information on how much time I'm going to spend on each section. I'm going to do that, again, changing the text box to Corbel. I'm going to make that 
12 point and I'm going to change the text color to that same dark gray that was not quite right that same dark gray that the horizontal line is so I want this to be visually a little bit less prominent than the rest of the shapes and lines on this design because I want people to notice the shapes first and that's a visual hierarchy thing so that's why I do it I'm going to actually make this 10 point to make that just a little bit more sleek looking then I'm going to align the text box with the time information underneath it now I will use my alt or option key again to make some copies of this text box and align them again underneath each sec each corresponding section and change the, that data so that if people don't understand the visual spatial design they can at least understand the time information in minutes alright so my intro is five minutes my argument is 20 minutes my counter argument section is 20 minutes and my Q&A is 15 minutes. I'll line that a little bit better. I'm going to group these because the next thing I'm going to do is animate them and I'll want to have these objects grouped on the slide when I animate them. I selected both the Q&A shape and the 15 minutes text box. I'm go I've gone up to my arrange menu on the toolbar to choose group. I'll do this same thing for counter argument and 20 minutes arrange group same thing for argument select argument select 20 minutes arrange group and lastly intro five minutes arrange group now I am ready to do my last step which is to animate this slide I will select the first group of shapes I'll do insert animation I will choose the fade in animation and I want it to all happen fast so I'm just going to choose the fade in on click fast and again these animations will be called something slightly different in PowerPoint but you'll still be able to find I think it's called just plain old appear in PowerPoint so I'm going to do that for the first shape I'll add an animation same way for the second shape same way again for the third shape and lastly for Q&A alright here's my completed slide let's just test that in presentation mode when I'm presenting this the audience will see just this agenda slide with the horizontal line they'll see first the intro then the argument then counter argument and Q&A and that's exactly what I wanted